You might have heard about this, a revolution is underway, and our computing power will probably change drastically in the upcoming decade, opening up new possibilities for the human race and solving painful problems left unanswered. This video will explain and keep you up to date with quantum computers, how they work, how different are they from classical computers, and why we even need them. And did Google already achieve a fully functional quantum computer and we didn't notice? Short opener and let's go! Research about these types of computers began in the 70s with an article published on the topic. Later physicist Richard Feynman also compared the possibilities of theoretical quantum computers against classical ones. You probably know that our computers run on binary. Each bit can be either 0 or 1. Those are usually translated from electricity passing in transistors of tiny scale. And the magnitude of millions and billions of transistors that change from 0 to 1 and back, we compute complex mathematical equations and solve problems that would be unsolvable otherwise. So how quantum computers are different? What is quantum about them? Quantum computers use qubits, which is quantum bits. Those have quantum properties and are not the same as a usual bit. Well, a minute about quantum properties if you don't mind. Quantum properties are derived from quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is a branch of physics that deals with photons, electrons, and atomic nuclei. It describes that in this tiny particle scale world, energy and momentum can't get any desired value but only a discrete value of a unit called quanta, which means amount in Latin. In quantum mechanics, a tiny object like an electron can be either a wave or a particle. Either way, in the quantum world, until we look and check for ourselves, we can't know for sure. Hence, both states are possible. This is called particle wave duality. So what you need to know is that quantum systems can be in multiple states at the same time until it is measured. This is called superposition. We can't know for sure which state exactly. Any two quantum states can be added together, superposed, and the result will be another valid quantum state. Famous scientist Schrodinger simplified it for dummies with his cat thought experiment which goes. If you place a cat in a box with radioactive material and randomly detonate the capsule with the radioactive substance, the cat can be either dead or alive until you open the box. It is both until you observe it. When we observe the system, we actually make it collapse. This is important because in every calculation we make with qubits, we eventually observe the answer and collapse the system. We think you got the idea. In the quantum world, different states are possible at the same moment. So enough with the quantum mechanics for now. Let's look at a few examples. When you understand superposition exists, it is the same with the state of a qubit. It can be a one and a zero and any superposition or combination between them. Like zero and one simultaneously. Imagine our usual bit is a coin and our qubit is a second coin. The first coin is tossed and can be either a heads or tails, but not both. We have two different outcome states possible. This is a regular bit. Now, one more coin for our quantum bit. This second coin can be both head, tails, or both at the same time. It is like the coin is spinning and both states exist at the same time. It is very hard to grasp at first how this is possible. But trust us, smart dudes figured it out already. Now, let us stop the spinning coin. Once we stop, it is like the collapse we explained before. In order to observe the answer, we collapse the coin system. The power of quantum computing is that every qubit has more possible states than a classical bit. We can check more calculation cases at the same time. So if a classical register of n bits can have two in the power of n states, a quantum register on the other hand can have any superposition of two power of n states. And this in turn results in reduced computation time. The qubits themselves are made of the element niobium and pressed into a chip of silicon, the material that ordinary computer chips are made of. So how does all of this comes to practice? Well, take this scenario for example. 
Let's say you are going on a hike and planning to visit different sites like waterfalls and springs. You want to find the shortest route to visit them all. If you visit 14 sites, you have 87 billion possible combinations. An average computer might take a minute or two to solve this. But if we will increase it to 20 sites, we will get this monstrous number of possible routes. In this case, your computer will take around 15 years to find the shortest route. Now increase it to visit 30 sites and the number of possible routes is so huge. Forget it, the whole universe will die before your problem is solved. At this moment, the quantum computer comes for the rescue. By mimicking the chemical and physical processes of nature at the atomic level, the quantum computer can speed up the development of new medicines, bring new life-saving drugs, and even help invent superconducting materials that conduct electricity better than what we have. In 2023, governments and tech giants are working and investing huge amounts of funds in solving quantum computer problems. In 2019, Google's quantum computer did a calculation in less than four minutes that would take IBM's world's most powerful computer 10,000 years to do. This makes Google's quantum computer about 158 million times faster than the world's fastest supercomputer. But later IBM claimed their computer will take around two and a half days, not 10,000 years. Google develops this machine at the Quantum AI campus. This center is complete with a quantum data center, quantum processor chip fabrication facilities, and hardware research labs. The main processor is called Sycamore. Google's quantum computer, Sycamore, and IBM's IBM Q System 1 both process data using microchips. Instead of millions of transistors spitting out zeros and ones, the quantum computer's brain contains very few qubits. The Sycamore chip has 53, and the IBM computer has only 20. Google wants to build a practical quantum computer by the end of this decade that could potentially be used commercially to handle large-scale scientific and business calculations with an exponentially higher efficiency without errors. But perhaps, a third IT giant, Microsoft, has the solution to the problem. Via a so-called topological circuit of quantum bits, this company is trying to circumvent the fragile structure of the quantum computer. The design works like Lego blocks, connecting qubits like bricks in a house and thus making the computer less vulnerable. In early 2023, Taver Electronics announced it developed a functional quantum computer with five qubits. The company claims they are going to change the market radically. They claim the system can be set up in a few hours, researchers can start computing immediately. Company hopes to upgrade it to 100 qubits in the near future. This machine expected to be presented at the APS show in March 2023. Success in this field means better battery efficiency, sustainable energy, and drug discovery. Quantum computers will also help in cybersecurity and cryptocurrency development. But to start a new scientific golden age, the researchers behind the new technology still have a few hurdles to overcome. As Google's representative stated, they are still at the very beginning of a decade-long journey. To succeed in this quantum leap, the quantum computer must be able to work with thousands and perhaps even millions of qubits simultaneously. And that is difficult since the structure of qubits in Google's and IBM's quantum computers is like a house of cards that threatens to collapse at the slightest external noise. Because the properties of quantum mechanics occur only at the tiniest scale, the slightest disturbance is enough to make the qubits ineffective. Even one atom of air or light particle can knock these flimsy and vulnerable qubits off course, causing them to lose their superposition or entanglement. And after that happens, you can forget about getting the right answer. As said by the developers, our qubits are very fragile, even cosmic rays hurt them. That is why the quantum chip is kept in a cryostat. A cryostat is basically a large freezer for the qubits, which cools the chip to the almost absolute zero of minus 273.15 degrees Celsius at this temperature. The calculation is less likely to be set off course. Google says its next milestone is error-corrected logical qubit. This can reduce the effects of noise on stored quantum information. Quantum error correction is theorized as essential to achieving fault-free quantum computing. 
So how long will a 300 qubits quantum computer will solve the hiking problem presented before? Well, actually in around a few seconds while it checks all the routes simultaneously. Sounds crazy indeed. The existence of quantum computers doesn't mean classical computers will cease to exist. We are still going to use our classical computers to watch movies, send an email, and edit a video. Quantum computers are here for the really heavy data tasks. They will make a big leap in pharmaceutical calculations which involve complex molecules that can interact with thousands or millions of other molecules. Whether the quantum computer will get its final breakthrough at Microsoft, Google, IBM, or in China. One thing is certain, the race to get the quantum computer out of the freezing labs and prove the value of the technology has already begun. Hi there. If you like this video and enjoy the content, help us make more of them, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of technological progress and updates. Don't miss out on other topics we covered on our channel. Thank you for watching.